Austin, congratulations on your recommitment to Baylor. And and look, you've got it makes sense that when Ohio State, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, all these schools call, you've got to pick up the phone, right? That these are the premier programs in America. But you, in the end, chose the Little Baptist School in Waco. Why did you stick with Baylor even through these massive offers? Yeah, I mean, I think several things. I think, you know, the coaching staff, um, the offense that Coach Grimes run, runs, and also, you know, just the academics. I mean, getting a degree from Baylor um, is going to set you up for success after football, and I think that was a big big thing for me too. So I think, you know, those, those three things combined, I think, uh, you know, just made Baylor home for me. Austin, through the process, obviously Sean Bell was really close with you. I know he went to Dripping Springs multiple times, and you guys had talked – how much was – how pivotal was he in this decision and how much of yourself do you see in Sean Bell and kind of his story coming from small-town high school to premier quarterback at Baylor? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we've had the relationship for a little over a year now and um, I think, you know, it's grown every week and I think just, you know, actually this past weekend just getting to actually work out with him um, at the camp and, you know, kind of get coached by him, I think, um, just showed that, you know, it was a good fit for me. I think he's like family, you know, um, he knows a lot about my personal life and, you know, keeps up with me. And so I think, you know, just this past weekend really showed uh, me why I fit in, you know, in the Baylor program. And so it was good. Talk about that, getting to play in Waco on Baylor's campus. You're in the indoor facility, you're throwing to guys and being around guys who are who are within the Baylor program. Was that kind of the the last domino to fall for you, for you to decide that Baylor was going to be home? It was. It was almost like icing on the cake, just getting around the coaches again, uh, the commits, you know, at the barbecue. Um, you know, all that, I think, just showed me and made me feel more confident um, and ready to pull the trigger um, this past week week or whatever um weekend uh saturday that was so austin i want to get into a little bit of the recruiting process with with the calls that you got and even elite 11 and how that sparked you as as a recruit but first talking about about loyalty i'm just going to pitch that to you what does the word loyalty mean to you yeah i think you know just uh being loyal to the people that you know you you're around and i think that to me that just means you know um showing people you trust them and uh, they have trust for you, you know, um, being open with people. Um, and that's kind of what that means to me. But on, on that note and, and being loyal to Baylor and being loyal to, to Waco and this entire deal, did you feel as though when you first committed that you had, you'd kind of given your word there and mm-hmm. that that was something you wanted to stick to in the end from the jump? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I was committed and then never really decommitted just because Baylor was always in it. I always, like, loved Baylor. And so I think that's the reason I didn't decommit um, mm. because I knew that it was a good place. And, you know, you got a lot of people telling you this and that, but I think, you know, I just kept my head down, went to the schools I needed to see and um, made the right decision, I think. So I'm yeah. excited. I mean, you've worked your way into one of the top 10 quarterbacks in, in this class. And <laughs> – now with that, the the appeal of Baylor, what was it about Baylor, even still coming on campus this last week? Was it the coaches, the facilities, the NIL opportunities that made you think, all right, I know I'm getting these huge offers from these big-name schools, but Baylor is still it for me. What was the difference? It's, it's hard to explain, but when you get on campus, it's just the feel that you get, you know, when you're around the coaches, when you're around the players, um, you know, just the whole staff when you get around them, you feel like you're at home. And I think that, um, you know, playing football there is just going to be comfortable for me. And I think it's a place that I can be successful. So um, it was a little bit of everything, but it was the right place for me. Austin, to, to get into your last like six months, you know, there was when, when we first had you on the show, I think it was six months ago. I think you had offers from maybe three or four power five schools, if that. And then it was like Stanford calls and you think, oh, there comes that. And then next thing you know, Ohio State, Texas A&M, Notre Dame. What have the last few months of recruitment been like for you when these big names have have called you? It just it feels like that's an honor in itself. It definitely was getting to, you know, talk to these coaches and guys that, you know, might be in the NFL one day. Um, 
you know, these coaches are the best of the best. The programs are the best of the best. You know, top five teams um, in the nation, um, you know, recruiting you is definitely an honor. And I think just the whole process was, um, you know, exciting because not many people get to do it. So, um, you know, I went through it and I'm excited to, you know, be committed now and um, get to talk to those coaches along the way, though. Elite 11 as well, getting to go and kind of match yourself or, you know, size yourself up to other quarterbacks across this class. What did you learn in that process? And did it show you that, man, there's a lot of great quarterback talent out there. I don't know if I fit that level. Or do you feel like you fit right in right there with the top five, 10 guys? Yeah, I mean, that's the best of the best. Um, The top 20 in the nation go out there and compete. um, And, you know, you build a relationship with those guys and uh, kind of talk to the guys that you're going to play your whole college career, you know, maybe one day in the NFL, um, you know, but that class, our class, the 23 class is, you know, elite. And I think just going out there and competing with them, um, you know, kind of showed me that, you know, I'm up there with them. And I think that, you know, I'm at the top of the class with those elite guys. When you've got names like Arch Manning in this quarterback group or, Ia Malieva, huh? Ha, ha, mm-hmm. I got that. Yeah. Did you see me? Yeah. You see that right there? When I'm you have enough. guys with those names that are in in the same class as you, and to get to be all, like, I was looking at rankings yesterday, and it's like your name is right there with those names, and those guys are on ESPN every other day. Is is there something to be said about that for you to be right there next to the last name Manning? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know he's a good player. They're all great players, uh, you know, at the top. I mean, I've seen most of them and um you know i think that if i just keep on working i can get to where i want to be and i think that you know um you know at the end of the day rankings you know are cool but i don't think that you know it's not football right i mean Mm -hmm. you got to go out there and play the game so um it's cool and all but i think if you just keep on working um i can be the best that i want to be so Mm -hmm. Look, you didn't say this. I'm going to make it very clear. I said this, but Texas, they lead the rankings every year in recruiting and perennial five and seven, seven and five. You didn't say that. I said <laughs> that, but you're right. <laughs> rankings don't always matter in recruiting. And uh, that that to me is, again, you know, seeing your name next to those guys and right up there. What's also cool to me, dude, I, I don't know if you get this. I talked to John Garcia, Jr., director mm-hmm. of Sports Illustrated Recruiting. And John had mentioned you from Dripping Springs. Like when, when's the last time a top five, top 10 quarterback came out of Dripping Springs high school? It feels kind of like this smaller town underdog story of a guy that comes from, you know, you're playing alongside Arch Manning, who's at, you know, off playing the biggest high schools in, in America. So is that something that you carry with you in itself? Like Dripping Springs to you, is there a lot of pride to have come from a school that's not known for having top prospect quarterbacks and to put them on the map like that? Yeah, I think we could definitely got Dripping Springs on the radar. And I think, you know, the guys are starting to see, and I think it's built confidence on our team, um, you know, because we're not the most talented team, but, you know, we get a lot of wins. And I think we do a lot with the guys that we have out there, um, you know, so – Going into this big district, uh, playing West Lake Lake Travis, um, it's going to be tough. But I think we're going to we're going to be good. And I think colleges have now, you know, seen who Dripping Springs is now, and you know, get out there and check out some of the guys we got for sure. Take that, you know, there's like Allen High School, right, or or West Lake. There's all these schools, you know, uh, that that people put on this pedestal, and then it's to me. And I want to see if you you see it too. It's like Baylor and then your Ohio State, Texas a and right? People mm-hmm. view that on a two different levels. So mm-hmm. did you see any similarities there between where you play high school ball and, and that underdog mentality and then in Baylor as well? Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of see Baylor as an underdog like Dripping Springs. And I think that, you know, I think I've proved out at Dripping that, you know, you can still be successful um, coming from one of those programs and, you know, I think dripping, we've definitely had a lot more success than, you know, maybe in the past. And so I think we can do the same at Baylor. There's already headed in a good direction, too, um, you know, coming off this past season at Baylor. And so, you know, getting in there, we can definitely, um, you know, keep that program rolling and be successful, too. 
I like uh, I, I was having some conversations with with Sean Bell and a couple guys in and around the staff about you and your progression into Baylor and how you have become like the ultimate recruiter. How in this process, the last few weeks, when a guy commits to Baylor, first guy to retweet it. Or if somebody's like on the fence in the top five that you've reached out to him, you're texting him, you know, a lot of these guys. If now that you've made this this commitment and locked it in 100 percent, do you feel like you as a recruiter, we'll get even more staunch and just keep going after guys even harder. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're always trying to get the best in our class. And I think this class, you know, is wrapping up. But I think, uh, you know, that we're going to probably finish in the tor- top 25, you know. And um, we have a stout class coming in. And we got to hang out with them at the barbecue and met some of the guys I haven't met yet. But, you know, we're always trying to get the best. So anytime, you know, the coaches let me know that we're trying to get this guy, you know, I'm going to reach out and, you know, try to do the best I can to, Show them why Baylor's the place. So, mm. speaking of the best, so I, I've seen tweets and and Facebook posts in the last twenty four hours that have talked about how you will end up being the best football could end up being very well the best quarterback commit to ever come to Baylor. When you hear that, do you get like butterflies, chills, some kind of knot in your stomach? Does that does that mean something extra, or are those just kind of words that people are throwing out? And you're just here to play football? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty calm. Uh, you know, and collected. I think that, you know, it's just kind of words. I'm just going to go in there and do the best I can, you know, uh, learn from Coach Bell and run the offense Coach Grimes wants to run. And I think that, you know, we're going to be uh, really good in the next couple of years. So mm. that the thing that comes with that, too, with being a really good quarterback prospect is people start talking about money. And we've talked about it on this show, too, and how there are a lot of recruits now who are saying, I'm going to go play somewhere. I mean, guys that transfer from LSU to Nebraska to make a million dollars. How mm-hmm. much does NIL and making money playing college football matter to you right now? Or, or is that something that's not quite on your radar? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to play uh, you got to play the NIL game just because other schools are doing it. You know, I'm not I'm not big on it. I think that, you know, it's good for the players once you're in college. I don't like the upfront money. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of gotten out of hand. Um, but I think that you know, if you're there and um, you want to take advantage of it. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, I think that some guys are doing it right and others are, uh, it's kind of, like I said, getting out of hand, but yeah. you know, I think it's a good opportunity and look forward to, you know, getting in the NIL once I get to Baylor. So. Yeah, certainly you'll be able to pursue that. And early on pursuing a roster spot as well is, is that before we wrap up something that you, you looked at to guys on rosters, like you go to a school, we'll, we'll throw out a random school, Alabama, right? They have, let's say they have eight guys that are in their quarterback room, which not true, but did you look at the number of guys in these different quarterback rooms throughout this process and, and see kind of your prospects for starting at Baylor? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing you're always going to take and, to consideration is just you know can you even play and that's the question you ask the coaches you know like is it a is it a realistic opportunity and you know I think that Baylor's QB room is friendly and I think that there's a chance that you know it's going to be tough but you can go in and compete and you know I think coach Aran has shown this year that he's going to play the best QB in the room so um, you know it was hard for him to do that but I think you know that's something that you want from the head coach is um you know, played the best and also gave Gary a good opportunity to move on before it got too late, you know. So I think uh, I respect, you know, Coach Aranda and his decision this year about the QB mm. uh, situation. No, oh, I'm going to stop everything right there and pop in here and tell you about Built Bar. In this this episode's insane, right? Like that's Austin Novosad, the guy that committed to Baylor. I don't like I don't really typically get starstruck on episodes, but and, and starstruck's the wrong word. I'm just happy. I'm really happy. You see right here that shirt says Turnpike Troubadours. Turnpike Troubadours. If you're listening online, you don't can't see it, but it says Turnpike Troubadours. They're a band that they were a band and then they broke up. They had a hiatus and then they they got back together and came back. Austin Novosad never broke up with Baylor, but I felt like it felt right to wear the Turnpike shirt because it was like, wow, you know, what once was, and you're like, oh, what will it be? And then, ha, ah, there it is. Built Bar has these new, gosh, I've been talking about it. I'm going to keep talking about it. Cookie dough chunk puff, 100% real chocolate, 100% real chocolate, only 160 calories per bar too, 15 grams of protein as well. I made with collagen protein. That's right. Collagen protein. College, which is where Austin Novosad is going. Baylor. 
college, university. Uh, your body absorbs very efficiently, by the way. It provides, ton provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. The new cookie dough chunk puff at Built Bar, whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or want to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar. Grab yourself a Built Bar. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-15, all caps. Get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com. Back to Austin. Austin, to close it out, I've got some quick hitters. That I'm, look, I'm just, I'm happy. The last 24 hours, you've just made all of Baylor Nation happy. So thank you for doing that. Uh, the first one being, how many Saturdays this fall will you be in Waco, Texas? Um, I mean, as many as I can. We have we have um, film every Saturday, um, you know, after our games. But, you know, definitely the afternoon games or night games, any that I can get to, um, you know, I'll be there. When you hear the last name Bell... What do you think? China Springs. Mm, <laughs> darn straight, man. I like that answer very much. I'm just going to leave it there because I like that answer so much. Which had my <laughs> ring. Uh, when it comes to folks out there who don't know who you are, I don't know what rock they would have been under. But if this is a Baylor fan's first time hearing an interview with you or, or seeing you as a person, what do people need to know about Austin Novosad first? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm competitive, you know, the most competitive person you'll meet. Um, I think athletic and smart um, are kind of the three things I would say. Um, you know, me and Coach Bell shoot this last week when we went out and played golf and, you know, played cornhole just because we're so competitive. And uh, actually that ended in a tie, but, you know, we're going to finish that out um, and I'll be the winner in that. So that'll be good. Did you out-golf him? So I out drove him and then we played a whole three times and he beat me two to one. So mm. that's only, what, what, what was this like a 15 minute golf round? It was like 30 minutes. We played, we, well, we can only go a mile off of campus. So we had to go to the Baylor practice course and, um, you know, they got like one hole out there, but I out drove him. That's all that matters, you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a uh, – dude, Top Golf. There's one of those in Waco. You've got it like yeah, – Do you been to Georgia's? Yeah. Yeah, you've been, been to, to Georgia's, Georgia. been to Top Golf, uh, been to Main Event, uh, been to Magnolia. Mm, uh, yeah, you have. What'd you get there? Um, I don't know. It was a couple of years ago. I think we got like a little breakfast thing or something. You I didn't get know. a shirt. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't get a Magnolia shirt. No. No, I did not get a Magnolia shirt. Dude, no you shirt. know how cool you'd be walking up and down the high school halls of Dripping Springs in a Chip and Joanna Gaines shirt? Yeah, I mean, I might have to snag one next time I'm up in Waco. <laughs> You'll have to do that. Uh, Austin, thanks for jumping on today. And yes, sir. Dude, I don't even, I don't even want to be done. What? <laughs> well, the, the last, this is it. I promise this is the last question. I'm just having fun. The last 24 hours, just take me through them and then we'll quit. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, Saturday, you know, uh, went to bed and then kind of knew that I wanted to, you know, make it final. And so then, you know, yesterday um, went through all the coaches and, you know, let them know what decision I would make. Um, you know, A&M, um, Notre Dame kind of let them know and then talked to Coach Bell and, you know, the whole staff was excited uh, early yesterday and then um, knew I wanted to, you know, post something yesterday night and uh you know about 7 30 i had a bunch of friends over all the uh football guys over and stuff we swam and you know messed around at the house ate wings and stuff and then um you know posted it like 7 30 last night and so um it was fun for sure i love it well austin <laughs> thanks for the third time for coming on today yes sir Great to have you as always. And for those listening at home, thanks for joining us on our random Tuesday uh, episode today. We'll see you again tomorrow where Cam Stewart joins us and breaks down the top 12 toughest football games for Baylor football in the fall. Thanks again to Austin Novosad and thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. Austin, is this your first interview, by the way, afterward? Uh, yes, sir. Boom! You guys hear that? Very first exclusive interview with Austin Novosad post-commitment. I'm Drake Toll. That's a Baylor bear. This has been Locked on Baylor.